What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I am back home, thank goodness. I miss my fire pit. Oh, you know, I love to travel, but you know what? There's nothing like being at home. Um, I actually got home, and I was tired today took a shower and I laid down in the bed. So I'm going to take me a little nap. That nap lasted for about two hours. But it's all good because I think my body just said, you know what? You need this, bro. Whew. So I'm back home trying to get caught up on all the news that is the Cowboys. We signed uh, Malik Jefferson as a um, linebacker for the Cowboys. Journeyman linebacker, which is good. Um, we ended up letting go um, oh man running back, but he may come back on the practice squad or may come back later. We had to make room for uh, Malik um, Hardy. Hardy. I can't remember his first name. Sorry, I'm having a brain fart. But as I was going through and looking at stuff, a Twitter clip of Tony Romo talking about the Dallas Cowboys and what he expects to get from the Dallas Cowboys. I came across. In fact, let's go to this clip because I think it's actually very interesting. When you think of what is the Dallas Cowboys offense going to look like without Amari Cooper? The Cowboys have been. Yeah, Tony, what do you expect from Dak Prescott? He's healthier this year, won't have Cooper. But I feel like nationally this has been the offseason of the Eagles and the expectations are a little bit down for Dak Prescott in this offense. Does that make sense? Well, yes, but I also think. Like the Cowboys have been probably the best offense in the division for a while now. And, you know, that the offensive line since around uh, 14, 14 ish, they started to get really good. And so that's carried them for such a long time. And then you threw in these pieces at wide receiver, and all of a sudden this was a dynamic group that could, you know, was going to be very difficult to stop. And uh, you're seeing just a little bit of change start to happen. So I think you'll see a shift in philosophy a little bit. The identity might change and go get back toward the 16-ish, you know, 17, 18 season. But uh, I still think Dak Prescott's going to have a fantastic year. I think he's shown he's more than capable of playing great football consistently throughout a year. And I just think it's going to be a little different, you know, because the weapons won't be quite as dynamic. They'll still be very good. But I do think that you'll see teams play them just a little bit differently. That's interesting. And what are you expecting Dak to, you know, improve upon this offseason? Obviously, every year you want to add more tools to your arsenal. What are you expecting to see from Dak as we head into the season? Well, I think you know what you're getting from Dak. I mean, he's played at a high level a long time now. And so the, the, what I want to see is just the other guys, you know, the younger wide receivers that, you know, the people that are in positions to really make a huge impact that need to, you know, you saw Diggs do that on defense last year, you know, Micah Parsons. I mean, these guys really came on and, you know, you need a guy or two like that each year, but I think Dak's going to be Dak. He's going to be good. He's going to play good football and uh, he's going to give them a chance to win every week he plays. Interesting. If, they got back to the offense of 2014 or 2016, that would be outstanding. I know Mike McCarthy and Kellen Moore love the pass, but the thing is that's key about those offenses were balance. That should have been a Super Bowl team in 2014. In fact, you could say 2016 had the defense been a little bit better, that that could have been a Super Bowl team. And mind you, for all of you that say Dak sucks, when we went head to head against Aaron Rodgers, Dak had three touchdown passes and 304 yards in that playoff game. But be that as it may, balance is the key. Because in that year, I don't think Tony Romo actually threw for 4,000 yards. But efficiency wise, because the team was so balanced, because DeMarco Murray was, was feasting on the run, teams couldn't go ahead and sell out on Tony Romo in the passing game like they had in the past. You can't double cover everybody and put eight men in the box. And that, my friends, is going to be key for the season. Just it. It's, it's not rocket science. 
you can't be one dimensional, always running the football or always passing the football. You've got to be able to keep the defenses guessing on what you're going to do. 12 personnel. You remember, 12 personnel. Now, for those out there that are constantly always, Dak sucks, Dak is garbage, and things like that, here's an interesting thing. You know, everybody's got their list of the top 10 quarterbacks, you know, who they think are great. You know, Colin Cowter um, ended up having Derek Carr as a 10th. It doesn't have Dak or Lamar Jackson. It seems like Lamar Jackson's getting a lot of hate lately. But you know what? The bottom line with the quarterback is you're leading your team to win. And you can't look at Lamar Jackson and say he's had a lot of great weapons and stuff to work with, that he has been the whole offense. But be that as it may, MVP odds, because, you know, they always put great odds for, you know, garbage quarterbacks to win the MVP, right? So as we go through here, you got Josh Allen as the odds-on favorite. He's got the, the greatest odds. Followed by Patrick Mahomes at number two. Aaron Rodgers at number three. Tom Brady at four. Justin Huber. I'm kind of surprised by the Justin Huber one, but, but it's okay. He's at five. Joe Burrow at six, and, you know, Joe Burrow was magical last year with the, the Bengals, although I think the Bengals are going to have the Super Bowl hangover, and they're going to come back down to earth, first place schedule. You know, I can't believe the word is out, you know, that, that you know, with, with the Bengals. Now that the word is out, people are going to be gunning for them. Followed by Jalen Hurts. Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott. Little old Dak Prescott. So Dak Prescott has better odds than Russell Wilson. You know, Russell Wilson, who they're building the offense around in Denver, where they literally said all they need is a quarterback. It's kind of amazing, don't you think? Better than Jalen Hurts. Better than Carson Wentz. Better than a lot of guys. Better than Eric Carr. Because, of course, you know, they always take garbage quarterbacks, you know, uh, better than Kirk Cousins, and say, we're going to go ahead and say, you're a Super Bowl, M excuse me, an MVP. We're just going to do it. We're just going to do that because, well, garbage quarterbacks win MVPs all the time. In the end, all of these lists and things don't matter. Nobody truly knows who's going to be the good teams. This time last year, they were still talking about the Washington football team as one of the best teams in the NFC. This year, they're talking about the Eagles being one of the best teams in the NFC. The funny thing is, come the end of the year, it's usually teams that they had no idea were going to be good that end up being good. You know, I come out here, I come out here every night because I like to reflect. I got people that hate me. I, in fact, think I have my own TMZ that's out to get me. But it's cool because I'm going to keep doing what I do. Nothing's going to stop me. Nothing's going to slow me down. Nothing's going to break my stride. Nothing's going to hold me down. Oh no, because I got to keep moving. I come out here to reflect. One thing I've decided that, you know, I, I've got multitudes of things that I, 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 do. I do. YouTube here with a couple of different channels. You know, I do my woodworking and cabinet making. I do work, you know, downtown at Smithsonian and stuff. I ended up, you know, got the, you know, projects down there at Waynesburg at the Red Brick House. I'm always constantly on the go doing something. And I've had lately a lot of different things that have been keeping me from doing what I really want to do, which is fixing the red brick house. But I've decided that if I go down there to the country, even if it's only to pull two nails, 
I must do something to improve my situation with that reprocast. Because anything that I get done, that trip, means I don't have to go to the next one. And you start stacking together all those little things, all those little things become big things. And that's my mentality. I look at things and look for the positive side of it. But you know, there's so many people out there that the whole life and everything is about negativity. It's like your slept rock. Oh, woe is me. Oh, oh, woe is me. Case in point. Okay. Inflation has been through the roof. Okay? It's just been through the roof. The dynamics haven't really changed that much as far as the oil production. Now, I know that they're, they're talking about a possible recession. We've ended up raising interest rates, which are made to try and curb demand a little bit to try and stop the inflation. We can't go through and have 10% inflation every month. We just can't. You, you end up being like a third world country where the, the money is completely worthless. So they're trying to slow that down. When there's positive signs, can't we just take it as a positive sign? Because coming back today, it was great. And, and it's still too hot. But I got gas for $3.97. That same gas station last Thursday was three thirteen, dollars And I'm sure the week before that, it was probably three twenty nine. dollars So you're seeing a trend nationwide. And, and I know California, I feel bad for you. I'm going to find out when I get out there in, in, in two and a half weeks that, you know, you're spending six, seven dollars a gallon, which is just crazy. Uh, for it, but the fact that it's going down is a positive, and everybody said, "Oh, well, you know, it's gonna go right back. Oh, it's gonna be this. It's gonna be." And, and it's just negativity on everything. Can't we say, "Hey, at least I spent fifty dollars less on a tank full of gas this week than I did a month ago," and hope that it lasts, and hope that the trend continues, and hope that the prices get back to a normal thing because you know what bad times don't last bad people do bad people are always around they never change but bad times don't last and instead of always looking for the negative the worst case scenario how about we try and look for some positivity how about being thankful that you're able to at least have a job to be able to get some gas and that the price is going down and maybe next week it'll be even cheaper instead of always bitching and moaning and belly aching about everything it gets to me how much people spend always complaining if you stop complaining so much and worked on your situation you wouldn't have so much shit to complain about sorry about that i just kind of lost my cool but it's just like so much Freaking negativity of everything. Everything. Be thankful for what you got. Because I can tell you right now, there are millions and millions of people, I don't care what situation you're in, that wish they only had your problems. They wish they had the prospects of what you have. They wish they had your life. Instead of being a nandy-pamdy little old bitch, be thankful for what you got. And that's all I have to say about that. I hope you guys have a great Thirsty Thursday. And I'm going to end this like I always do. Be sure to tell the people you love that you love them because you might not get the chance again. I love you guys. Have a great night, and God willing, I'll see you in the morning.